In the last video, we used FitY by X to fit an ANOVA model to our one-factor or one-way linear model. Let's try it the Fit Model platform, a platform I haven't shown you before, because this platform will be useful more generally when we have linear models. Fit Model is a very general modeling platform, but for our purposes, it'll be useful for analysis of variance models that include more than one factor. But it is perfectly appropriate for models with a single factor, and in fact, will give us additional output that will be useful. In the module journal, select cost of flight. Now, for these data, let's use instead of fit y by x, analyze fit model. As I mentioned before, fit model is a very general modeling platform, and it has several different personalities. Standard least squares, or ordinary least squares, is what our analysis of variance models are fitting. Least squares should remind you of something. We are minimizing the distances between the points and the mean, and we're doing so by a method called least squares. Least squares is actually a method owned to Carl Friedrich Gauss, someone I've mentioned before. So our personality will be standard least squares. In fact, we don't need to specify the personality because Jump is smart enough to know which personality to select. For instance, I'm going to take cost of flight and click it into the Y role. And notice that Jump will immediately designate the personality to be standard least squares. Now emphasis is a new category. Emphasis is what output Jump will return when I click Run. Effect leverage is very useful for certain types of models, but for us, let's select Minimal Report. Minimal Report will show the least output to start, but we can always select more output using the red triangles. I'll select Minimal Report now. In the Model Effects section, we'll designate what effects or terms we want to have in our model. In this case, we only have one factor under consideration, which is Airline. So I'll select Airline and click Add. The reason we have a Model Effects section rather than simply an X is that we can designate very complicated models using the Model Effects section. We'll see in later modules that will form factorial structures using the Model Effects section. For now, this is the complete construction of our model. We're predicting 1y on the basis of this single factor. Once you have this set up, simply click Run and Jump will return the fit model output. Like we did for the output from fit y by x, let's step through each section of this output. Since this is the identical model that we fit in fit y by x, we'll see some terms that'll look familiar. But fit model produces some additional pieces, so we'll want to step through those as well. First, let's look at the terms that we've seen before. The corrected total lists the sums of squares total, that is, the total amount of variability in y that we can hope to explain. We also have the sums of squares for treatment. Notice in this analysis, it's listed as the sums of squares for the model. The model here could refer to additional terms. It doesn't have to simply refer to airline if we have multiple terms in our model. In this case, we only have one factor or one effect under consideration. So these sums of squares is exactly the same as the sums of squares for treatment. We also have the sums of squares for air. And this is the prevailing error remaining in our model after we've explained all that we can explain on the basis of airline. From these sums of squares, we also get the mean square for treatment and the mean square for error. Remember, the mean square for treatment is simply the sums of squares for treatment divided by its degrees of freedom. In this case, the degrees of freedom for the model or for sums of squares for treatment is simply 2. So our mean square for treatment is 79.29 divided by 2 or 3964, the variance or the mean square associated with treatment. Similarly, the mean square for error is just the sums of squares for error divided by its degrees of freedom. In this case, the sums of squares for error were 60,375 divided by its 97 degrees of freedom, yielding a mean square for error or a prevailing variance of 622. From these mean squares is where we find the F ratio literally the ratio of those mean squares, 3964 divided by 622, yielding the same F observed, 6.3696. It's from this F ratio that we also get our p-value, the probability if the null is true and there really are not treatment offsets associated with airline or grouping factor, that we would observe an F ratio this large or larger by chance alone. Now you may have noticed under the effect test section, we have additional terms that actually match the terms from the analysis of variance table. 
Specifically, we have a redundant version of sums of squares for treatment. Notice that this is associated directly with airline. As we go on and we fit models with additional terms, we'll want to look in this effect test section because the effect test section will identify the sums of squares associated with each different factor. So if we had multiple factors in our model, we'll want to know which of our factors are contributing to the explanatory power of our overall model. So these sums of squares match the sums of squares associated with model in the analysis of variance table. That won't be the case as we go on and fit more complicated models. So my recommendation would be as a first glance to look at the effect test section. Now with these sums of squares in the effect test section, we also have the F observed, the F associated with this effect specifically, and the P value associated with this effect specifically. Again, with a one-way model or a model with one factor, these values match the terms in the analysis of variance table at the top. But as we go on, we'll be interested in the effects associated with each individual factor we're fitting. Now finally, we have a parameter estimate section. Now the parameter estimate section are specific estimates and tests associated with the parameterization of our model. Now the parameterization of our model is what we did when we derived the mathematical form of the one-way analysis of variance. That is, those were how we estimated the TAS and the grand mean. Let's look at each of these terms. First, we have the intercept of the model, which is equivalent to the grand mean. This is where our treatment offsets are offsets from. Next, we have a treatment offset for delta and another treatment offset for southwest. This is our estimate of TA sub 1 and TA sub 2. You might notice that we don't have an estimate for TA sub 3. In fact, in this parameter estimate section, there isn't one for Virgin America. And yet, our model is considering the Virgin America category. Remember, the degrees of freedom for our airline categories, that is the degrees of freedom associated with treatment, were two. And they were two because one of our categories was actually statistically redundant. That is, we know that we have offsets for Delta and Southwest equal to 11.8 and negative 3.4. And we also know that the sum of the T's, that is in our model, the sum of the treatment offsets is equal to zero. So on the basis of these two offsets, we actually already know the third. So our model isn't refitting that third treatment offset. It doesn't need to fit it statistically. It doesn't need to pay for that estimate with a degree of freedom. And so statistical models don't redundantly estimate things that it can already figure out on the basis of the way we are parameterizing. If you really wish to see that final offset and you don't want to do the arithmetic to calculate it yourself, under the red triangle under estimates, there's an option to show all parameter estimates. In this case, just notice that we have estimates for the two categories we need and we can also figure out the third with some simple arithmetic. Now I'll make one final note. You'll notice there is a t-ratio and a p-value associated with each of these parameter estimates. In fact, these are tests of whether those parameters are different from zero. Now this will be useful sometimes if what you're really interested in is whether one of the airlines, and you may have more than simply three, has an estimate different from the grand mean. That's what those hypothesis tests are really referring to. But our overall model is probably of more interest. We're interested in whether the factor of airline actually is used in the population model, which is what our overall p-value, the p-value in this case in the analysis of variance table or under the effect test section, is really telling us about.